Hello everyone and welcome back to another True Crime Mysteries video. Thank you all for being here. Today we're discussing the bizarre attempted murder in an attempt to steal the identity of Olga Spitz. And the murder weapon? A cheesecake laced with a lethal amount of sedatives. Let's get into it. In late August 2016, Olga Svix, an eyelash esthetician from Ukraine who now lived in Queens, New York, and worked in a salon there, got a call from one of her clients asking for an emergency eyelash repair. The client, Victoria Nesrova, had just gotten her eyelashes done a few days before at the salon and said it was an emergency and that she had something important this weekend. Olga had asked if she could wait for an appointment in the salon, and Victoria insisted and asked if she could come to Olga's apartment. Victoria had been there before for a social visit. Olga finally relented and Victoria came to her home. Victoria said that she walked all the way from Brooklyn to Queens for the eyelash repair. Victoria also brought a gift with her. She told Olga it was the best cheesecake from Brooklyn. They sat down and Victoria ate two pieces of the cheesecake and then offered Olga the last piece of the cheesecake. Out of respect, Olga took it and ate it. Almost immediately after eating the dessert, Olga began to vomit and feel dizzy and disoriented. She went to lay down. From this point on, she remembers very little, other than remembering Victoria walking around her apartment. Olga was found by a friend face down on the floor the next day, only in underwear. The friend called an ambulance and she was rushed to the hospital. They did the standard drug tests, but couldn't find anything. Eventually, more advanced tests would be done. Olga would be in the hospital for a few days and had been very close to death when she was found. Olga would end up in the hospital twice. To this day, she does not have any memory of when she was drugged. When Olga returned home from the hospital with her sister, they noticed several missing items. Olga's passport, her U.S.-issued employment authorization card, $4,000 in cash, and jewelry were all missing from the home. They also found pills on the floor, which didn't make sense as Olga didn't take any medication. They called the NYPD, who came and collected everything. The pills, the cheesecake box, which surprisingly had been left behind, and took photos of the evidence in the apartment. The pills and cheesecake would go through extensive testing. The pills were identified as phenazepam, which is not sold or made in the US. It's made in Russia. The effects of the drug provide a sedative effect, used to relieve anxiety or anxiousness. It can also cause a lot of coordination, dizziness, and drowsiness. Large doses can also make a person forget, put them to sleep, or cause a coma or even death. Forensics also found trace amounts of the same drug inside the cheesecake container. They also found female DNA that did not match the victim. NYPD believed that Olga's apartment had been staged to look like Olga had committed suicide, hoping to steal her identity. Fortunately, Olga survived. At this time, both women looked very similar. This was not the first time Victoria had been on the NYPD radar, and the police had been looking into Victoria as a suspect in several robberies and druggings of local men in New York and Brooklyn. One of these men was Ruben Burakov, who owned a local dry cleaner, and had met Victoria who was going by the name of Anna at the time, on a local Russian dating website in June 2016. They talked for a while and eventually Victoria invited him over to her place to have dinner. Anna had said she was an excellent cook and wanted to share that with him. He went over for dinner and noticed something strange. The apartment looked like someone was either moving in or moving out. He said nothing because he didn't want to embarrass her. She had made him a fish for dinner. And that was the last thing Reuben remembers. His next memory was being in the hospital a week later. His employees had later said that a woman had dropped him off, saying that he'd had too much to drink. They also said that she had helped him into his office and explained everything and left. His employees then called an ambulance. Reuben says that he is not a drinker and that didn't make sense. He didn't have extensive testing, but he knew he'd been drugged. When he got out of the hospital, he discovered he had an expensive watch missing, as well as over $1,000 in cash missing from himself and his business. 
He also had a $2,400 charge on his American Express. He'd never heard from Anna again. The NYPD does not believe that this is the only instance Victoria used this tactic to steal from men. The NYPD believes a potential motive Victoria may have had for wanting to steal the identity and potentially kill Olga was that they had been starting to investigate, and they weren't the only ones looking for her. Victoria would later find out that there was an Interpol red notice in place, and Russian authorities were looking for Victoria in connection to a murder from 2014. The Russian murder case starts with Nadia Ford, who had lived in New York since 2007, but was originally from Russia. Her mother, Ayla Elisenko, still lived in Russia, and they were very close and talked daily. Ayla had been talking to Nadia about this wonderful and friendly new neighbor she had. This neighbor was Victoria Nesrova. Ayla started to trust Victoria, and they became very close. In 2014, Victoria told Ayla that she was planning a trip to New York, and she could take something for her daughter Nadia. Ayla gave her over $6,000 and a fur coat to give to her daughter. Victoria kept postponing the trip, and eventually Ayla asked for the money and the coat back. In October 2014, Victoria finally agreed to give the money back. Ayla told Nadia that they were meeting on October 4th. The next day, Nadia called her mother with no answer. She called repeatedly. Eventually, Nadia called Victoria and asked about her mother. Victoria had said that she saw her the previous day, and that she'd said something about going to town. This didn't make sense to Nadia, as her mother would have told her that. Nadia looked up her mother's call logs, and found out the last person her mother had talked to was Victoria. Nadia then flew to Russia, arriving a few days after her mother went missing. She called the local police and met them at her mother's apartment. The police did talk to Victoria at this time, but no arrest was made. Nadia found her mother's place empty, all of her valuables missing. Her mother's savings that she kept in the apartment, approximately $50,000, was also missing. Nadia would keep looking for her mother, with the Russian police telling her that she would eventually turn up. Then she got her hands on traffic camera footage that showed her mother in the passenger seat of a rental car with what looked like Victoria in the driver's seat. Nadia took this to the police and that was when she found out that they'd been investigating her mother's disappearance and already had the footage. The Russian police brought in Victoria for questioning and made her take a lie detector test, which she failed. And she lied about knowing where Ayla was or if she'd seen her. In April 2015, Nadia got the call she'd been dreading. They had found remains. They had been left in a secluded part of the woods and burned. Ayla was identified through dental records. Russian police put out an arrest warrant for Victoria, but by this time, Victoria had fled the country and was in the United States. Nadia hired a private investigator, Herman Weisberg, a retired NYPD detective, hoping to locate Victoria. He used Facebook photos in hopes of finding her. In March 2017, he did just that. Once he confirmed that he'd found Victoria, he informed the police where she could be found because by this time, she was wanted for the attempted murder of Olga. Victoria Nasarova was arrested in March 2017. Victoria had been arrested previously in 2016 for stealing coats in New York, but by this time, they never flagged her as an international fugitive, and she was released shortly after the arrest. After her arrest, Victoria's DNA was taken, which she volunteered willingly. She claimed she'd done nothing wrong, the DNA matched the cheesecake container. Ruben Borokov also got the opportunity to identify Victoria as Anna. Victoria was charged and arraigned in March 2018 with attempted murder and other charges including theft. In 2018, while incarcerated in Rikers Island awaiting trial, Victoria was interviewed by 48 Hours. They asked if she had poisoned Olga with the cheesecake. Her response was, quote, I know whom you mean. I know this young woman. I can tell you that. I did not force her to eat it. While in Rikers Island in 2018, Victoria was attacked by fellow inmates and was hit in the head repeatedly. She lost her sight temporarily. It was reported that the guard did nothing to help her, the guard saying the can of pepper spray was empty. Later that year, Victoria went on a hunger strike. 
Her lawyer declared that they were planning to sue the city, but nothing else was reported about the incident. Victoria could be seen in future court proceedings using a cane. Victoria's trial started at the end of January 2023. During the trial, Olga Svitz, Ruben Borokov, and Nadia Ford all testified against Victoria. You know, I spent a lot of time over the weekend thinking about how I was going to begin this opening statement for you. And the more I thought about it, the more I couldn't get past a young lady who was present here last week. She was sitting in the seat that Ms. Nargi is in right now. And when she was asked some questions about the judge, about her feelings on the case, she said something like, um, you know, I kind of find it to be a joke uh, that someone would poison somebody with cheesecake. She kind of laughed it off. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen of this jury, that this is not a joke, and we are not kidding around. There is nothing funny about what happened to a woman named Olga Svit on August 28, 2016, in her home, alone, in her bedroom. She wasn't giggling or having a good time. She was violently vomiting. You see, this woman was very, very sick. And it wasn't some random upset stomach that she was experiencing. This woman was floating in and out of consciousness. She was dizzy. She was disoriented. She didn't know where she was. And she was terrified that there was something seriously wrong with her. And to make matters worse, she was basically alone, alone in her room. And as the facts will show in this case, that wasn't a mistake either. Someone had left her there intentionally for her to die alone. She was found almost 24 hours later by her friends, thankfully. And I can tell you, she wasn't laughing when paramedics had to pull her from her bed and load her onto a stretcher because she was too weak to take her own feet. And when she was rushed to the emergency room of New York Presbyterian here in Queens County with her friend Marina by her side, she wasn't cracking jokes in the emergency room. She was hallucinating. She saw, thought that the people around her in those white coats, she thought they were angels. She actually said she thought that she was in heaven. Thankfully, this woman did not die as was intended. She lived. It took her several days to start getting better. And you'll learn that she's relatively healthy now, but she's, she's not without permanent damage or permanent effects. You'll learn that even to this day, she suffers from some permanent memory loss. She can't remember the last couple of days of August 2016, nor can she remember the first couple of days of September of 2016. And I wish I could say that the only loss she suffered was of the physical kind. But that's not the case. As you see, members of the jury, when she finally started getting better, getting back to normal, she realized that she hadn't been the uh, unfortunate uh, person who had some rare or exotic disease that caused her serious harm. No, she knew that she had been poisoned. Why? because she came to realize that many of her valuables were gone from her room. Almost $4,000 in cash, a red purse, a cherished ring, and most importantly, her Ukrainian passport and her US-issued employment authorization card, a document which demonstrated her legal status in this country. prosecution laid out how she was a serial poisoner and how she was a danger to the community. In February 2023, she was convicted of all but one of the charges against her, including the attempted murder of Olga Spitz. Her sentencing hearing is set for the end of March 2023, and she is facing up to 25 years in prison. 
As for the murder in Russia, the U.S. and Russian authorities have an extradition treaty, and Russian authorities have expressed interest in wanting her to face trial in Russia. This case made news worldwide, calling Victoria a femme fatale, a seductress, a con artist. Authorities do believe that she had more victims out there and are urging them to come forward. But for now, the public is safe from Victoria Nasrova. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. As always, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way is to hit the like button. You can also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. Other ways to support the channel are by joining my Patreon or channel membership. I also have merch, and you will find all that in links in the description box, plus a few extras. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter for more. But with that being said, thank you so much for being here and supporting what I do. It is very appreciated. That's it from me. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.